harmonize with me and hold me tight all through the night. You're shining bright, I'm your oyster, baby, you're my pearl. What is that? Um, uh, you didn't know it, James. It's something to do with gardening. It's a gardening nope, nope, world. It's got it's... nothing to do with gardening. Yeah, it has. No, it doesn't. Hasn't it? No. Nope. What is it then? It is, I believe. <laughs> yeah, pretty close. It is, I believe, the longest running radio play ever, The Archers. That's what it is. From Radio 4? The radio Archers two? from Radio 4. Oh, now, wow. you probably noticed, Tom. There's someone else in the yeah, studio there's someone today. someone to our right. <laughs> just then, just there. Do you want to introduce? Because he's, he's, he's your friend and very quickly becoming mine. <laughs> and he's, he's sitting where you normally sit. Yeah. It's Mr. James Master. James Thank you for your Masters. seat, Tom. This is a hey. very nice seat. You're keeping it warm. Yeah, you? I really am. Thanks, James, for, great great thanks for coming in, James. Oh, That's man. very kind of you. Yeah, I've been When I asked you, I thought, yeah, I thought you'd definitely say no. I he, thought you'd say, now, cool for it. I'm just a oh, little busy for that. Man, no. I've been looking forward to this all week. Woohoo! I'm just locked down in my house. So, you know, I get out. You live in California, James. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, James, we'll give you a little official blurb here, because for anyone who uh, wants to know exactly who Mr. James Master is, here we go. James Wesley Masters. I'm going to get into the Wesley thing in a second. Is an actor, musician, and comic book writer, best known for his roles, in the British Vampire Spike. As the British. Oh, in the British. As the British Vampire Spike in the TV show Buffy the Vampire Slayer. And its spin-off, Angel. Since then, he has played the alien supervillain Brainiac on Smallville with our friend Michael Rosenbaum. True. Captain John Hart in Torchwood. Amazing show. And terrorist Barnabas Greeley. Is that right? Yes. In on Caprica. sci-fi's Caprica. He also plays in the band Ghost of the Robot, Mr. Yes, it does. James Master. Hey! And you guys, whoa! and you guys know each other from a certain convention or some convention. Well, yeah, we've just kind of met over the years in conventions and and just being in around. that little small town called Hollywood. Yeah. that we keep bumping into each exactly. other. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, and I was a huge. I don't know if I've told you this before, but I was a huge Buffy fan. Oh, you have not told me. I also play in a band. Uh, called Bee Cake. And I have your CD. And well, it was awesome. Good. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad you enjoy it, man. I enjoy your music as well. Thank you. And, um, Get a room. Our, <laughs> and our uh, guitarist, Billy Johnson, loved Buffy. And I thought, I, I never thought it would be my thing, you know. Yeah. And he gave me the box set and I just devoured it. I loved it. It was brilliant. And you were incredible in that show. Absolutely incredible. Get ready for the ultimate winter night in brought to you by Beam. Beam is a functional wellness brand that makes products to help you pursue your better and push the boundaries of what's possible. White chocolate peppermint dream powder only lasts for a limited time. So get it while it's hot. Great news. If you subscribe now, you can take advantage of Beam's best sale of the year for Black Friday and Cyber Monday. You'll get... 40% off the first three months of Peppermint Dream subscription, plus a free mug and frother, or 20% off a one-time purchase. Again, this is Beam's biggest offer of the year, and just like this new flavor, it won't last long. Head to beamorganics.com slash onion, that's B-E-A-M, organics.com slash onion, for 40% off the first three months of Peppermint Dream subscription, plus free mug and frother, or 20% off one-time purchase. Subscriptions are month to month and can be paused or canceled at any time. I'm like you. I, I didn't think it would be my cup of tea either. Like I came into Los, I came to Los Angeles because I had, I had a son and I had to stop doing theater and come down to, to television. And I came down and I told my agent, I do not care about awards. I don't care about quality. I'm here for money. I need <laughs> diaper money and doctor money and college money. I'll be the new Urkel. I will be lucky 
Mm -hmm. I don't care. She's like, oh, nice. oh I great. love you. And uh, they gave me the audition for, for, for Buffy. And I was like, oh, no, not that. That's yeah. horrible. I, got, I saw the movie. I didn't like the movie. Right. And they're like, it's a TV show. It's different. Watch it and call us back after the show. And I watched 15 minutes in the first commercial break. I called my agent back. And I was like, this thing is incredible. Oh, yeah. my God. Really? Yeah. It was just really well written. It just worked really so well. Did you watch it now? I've seen Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I don't think I've watched all of the back-to-back -back in box sets like you are. Yeah. But for anyone who doesn't know it, Buffy the Vampire Slayer follows Buffy, who's going through college who's and then hot. in her yeah. very hot, and then in her nights she slays vampires. Is that the the general yeah. vibe yeah. of the show? She tries to be normal. But so it's normal impossible. stuff, falling in love, maybe a problem at school, problem with does she have parents? Are they around? She has a mother. Mm -hmm. She has a mother. Dad, a nefarious. Uh, the dad is yeah. The dad is wow. Okay, yeah. so that probably adds a little bit of extra kind of baggage to Buffy. Yeah. And no one at the school knows that she slays vampires? Is it a secret? She has a few friends who know her secret. Okay. And they, yeah. they help her slay and or get in the way of her trying to slay. Right. To comedic or horrifying effect. And from my kind of recollection in, in the times where I've watched it, it's kind of, it's purposefully a little kind of, outrageous like it's quite vampy is that right i don't mean vampy as in vampires i mean it's quite that is showy. the trick uh and why i didn't like the movie is because the writing is very sparkly mm. but if you play it if you vamp it uh if you play it arch as we like to say mm. it just it's half as good as it should be mm. and the trick was to play it straight Ooh. To play it as if there's no comedy at all, and at that point it becomes howlingly hilarious. But Ooh, it, you, mm. you just have to play it as if you're if you're doing David Mamet, right? And then suddenly everyone thinks you're a funny person. But it basically, S supposedly that's what how Leslie Nielsen always approached his roles in Airplane and Police Squad. He played it as if it was completely serious, and everyone around him yeah. is playing a joke, and he's just like, "I'm a detective, and I'm trying to solve this crime," <laughs> and it becomes incredibly yeah. funny. Yeah, Amazing. yeah. And like all great kind of TV shows like that, it has its through stories that you, but every week there'll be something exciting or weird or a new villain comes in or a new story that, that makes it interesting and brilliant. And I, I, I wanted to ask you, but I don't think we get to it so early, but with your musical background, the, the musical episode of Buffy, yeah. I think is the only time that I can think of where an episodic has got that right, where it was just brilliant. And I, I've seen a lot of shows do it, you know, where they try to make a musical. ER did it. ER did it. That's just nuts. ER did it? Yeah, ER did it. Grey's Anatomy did Grey's it. Grey's Anatomy. Yeah. Um, uh, a lot of shows have done it. But I'm trying to think of Buffy, a few others that did that it. That is maybe one of my favorite episodes. Really? It's brilliant. Yeah, we were horrified when we were asked to do a musical. Re really? We thought this show was getting flushed down the drain. Yeah. Jump uh, in the shot. Yeah, like most of the most of the actors very rightly thought, you know, you hired me to be a one camera drama dramatic slash comedic actor. That's uh -huh. my wheelhouse. Don't ask me to do something I'm not good at. Yeah. You're going to ruin my career. I think uh, Sarah, who played Buffy, asked to juggle chainsaws. She said, you know, you can start them up. I'll juggle real chainsaws rather than have to sing. It'll be safer for my career. Wow. Right? Um, and they had a point, actually. Um, but it was well-received, the musical episode. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, Tony Head and I, we were comfortable singing, but I didn't think the songs were very good. Mm. I really, because Joss gave, gave us a cassette tape of him singing the song. Ah, right. And as a singer, he's a really good writer. <laughs> Did he, really, really good. Did he write the songs? Yeah. Yeah, but oh, he was wow. he was playing them on the piano. I just I don't know. I'm a punk rocker, and I was just yeah. like, "This is terrible. Right. This is terrible." And we were all wrong. He yeah. knew what he was doing. And, he does seem and, to know what he's doing. That. Just and what do you him. think when you watch it? Do you like that episode? Oh, it's fabulous. I think it's brilliant. It's delightful. Yeah. Like that. I think yeah. that's a difficult thing to do to take a oh and and make a musical. That's so bizarre when you first. Yeah. Hear. I wonder what was the first show that ever did that. Yeah. Because there was an all musical cop show that only ran for like half a season. Do you remember that? Yes. I don't think we, I think it Didn't might have been do called, very well. No, it might be called Cop Land or something like that. Yeah. Did terrible. I know ER did it. You said Grey's Anatomy did it. Yeah. Uh, there's a couple more there's that we're missing out. A few more. Out. I think like. Arrow or The Flash, they've done it. They definitely pitched it 
very casually, very casually to us when we were doing Lost. I remember it being floated uh. around. What about a musical version? And everyone was like, absolutely not. We're not doing a musical version. No one will do it. Especially as you were the musician in that show. They'd have wanted you to really stand out. I think I would have been really. You would have been brilliant. I think, actually, I think Jorge Garcia and I were like, yeah. yeah, that'd be fun. But I think everyone else was kind of like, what? That makes no sense. And it kind of doesn't make sense until probably this Buffy episode where you go, well, what about that as an example? That seems silly, but look, it works, you know. That's the one I always look back at and I think, that really worked. Whatever yeah. they did, how did that work? Why did it work? But for some reason it did. I didn't make it, man. I was just in it. So you I can't even answer that question. <laughs> <you know? laughs> Joss we, Whedon, yeah. who, who, I mean, you must be a massive Joss Whedon fan, right? Because he did Firefly and Serenity and yeah. you're a massive Yeah, Firefly I, I really love that. I love Buffy. You know, I love really loves stuff. sci-fi. Like he's a, yeah, me I'm a big too. sci-fi. Yeah, I love it. Me too. In fact, talking about sci-fi, You've got a uh, Captain Kirk light right now. Oh, do I really? Yeah. Oh, You've got yeah. this strip. It's yeah. just oh, right yeah. across your eyes. Yeah, Remember, yeah. he had Get that right lighting. Yeah. 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 You've yeah. got that right there. <laughs> right there. Find it right there. There it is, baby. You see it? Bones. <laughs> Scotty, you, you gotta get those engines fantastic. going. Or you're you fired. I'm sure you yeah. don't mind me saying you look fantastic, James. <laughs> I don't mind. <laughs> well, I have the Kirk light. I can't yeah. look that. He does. Have you, have you seen that in Star, uh, uh, Star Trek? He has this weird well, light. Always. Quite got, a lot. I've got, I've got yeah. He's got just this weird just strip of light along his eyes. Where can did you, that come from in, in the Star Trek? Can you imagine producing it and Bill's asking for that lighting? And like, I don't, <laughs> just give it to him. We got to get the scene. <laughs> well, you've oh got God. it. It looks great. <laughs> yeah, stick with it. So now, so... How how often are you at these conventions, James? Of a of an average year, like pre COVID, I should say. I try to do no more than two a month. Okay, just because the travel gets, you know, it's a it's a lot of energy. They're high energy events, and I I'm actually I like to talk with Buffy fans because I'm I'm a fan of Buffy mm -hmm. the show. But I'm a fan of the writing, which right. I didn't do, so I'm not bragging. But but I, I Buffy fans tend to say like, oh, you like Buffy? Let's talk. Right. Like it's almost kind of a hidden handshake. Oh, that's cool. And so I fit in with the Buffy fans. So I don't, I, I have a great time doing them. It's just the travel gets me and the, the different time zones and stuff. So Where, where's, the, where's the furthest flung you've gone on a convention? Australia. Oh yeah, so as far yeah. as you can go really. Yeah. I and any time like, I've seen you at a convention, like if everyone's having dinner at night or meeting for a drink, say I'm meeting someone for a drink. I never busy, see busy. James. And I, I've always wondered, where does he go? What does he do? And I found out. Okay. I found out. Yeah. What does he do? He's in his room. Yeah. You'll like this. Yeah. He travels with a PlayStation. Is that right? And he sits and he plays games. So much so that he made a show out of it. Wow. Called Vidiots. Yeah. yeah. Oh, was there, there was a video shop in Santa Monica called Vidious. That's right. That had closed down by the time we started, so they couldn't sue us. So. <laughs> oh, well done. Which, Woof. years ago, because Billy's usually lived on the west side while he's been in LA, and back when we used to go to video shops, you used to call video it's. And I would go, no, it's vidiots. And you're like, no, no, it's video it's. it's I was spelled. like, why is it video it's? It makes no sense for it to be video it's. And I called his show. Video wits as well. <laughs> when I first, I thought that was just your Scottish kind <laughs> that, that of flair. That was me. See it, see it, like I see it. You know what I mean? <laughs> Vidiots. Yeah. That's why I kept saying. I was like, it's, it, it's idiots, vidiots. You're like, no, nah, no. Nah, I don't get it. I don't get it. <laughs> so, what's been your journey with with what we would call computer games or, or video games in your life, and how, how's that gone? I. I remember the first one I got, I was just so poor for so long that I didn't really, I couldn't afford video games. But I remember when one of the Mario games came out, it was 64 or something. Yeah. And I, this is in the 80s in Chicago. And my, my then wife and I, uh, we gave each other the, the console and that one game. Yeah. And that's all we could afford. And it got us through a whole Chicago winter. It was fabulous. What was, what was the game? It was the Mario, you know, the Super Mario Brothers oh, Super Mario 64, Brothers. Whatever, whatever it right, was. Right, right, right. And um, because that was the same console that had the Mario Kart, right? The '64. I guess, but we couldn't. Have, we we so we blew all the money on the one cartridge in the one game. Right, <laughs> but right. that's all that we needed. And um, and then that was it. I didn't really play video games again until I got down here and started making money on television. And then I guess it was the PS3. No, I got the PS2. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and started playing that with my son. 
And then I was just bit and I just played everything. And do you play like just when you're traveling or will you go home tonight and play something? I have enough time for about an hour a day. All right. Yeah. And I always feel like I deserve more, but well, I never don't get we all, it. Don't we all? <laughs> hey, fellas. This episode of The Friendship Onion is brought to you by our favorite producers of trimmers. Manscaped, the global leaders in below-the-waist grooming, are leaving 2021 with a new product. Clean yourself into the new year with their ultra-premium body wash. Also, special offer alert, use the code ONION for 20% off plus free shipping at manscaped.com. Four million men already trust Manscaped. I think it's time to join them. Mm -hmm. I agree, Bills. And also, get this, Manscaped engineered the ultimate groin and body trimmer by focusing on intelligent functionality and an incredibly comfortable grooming experience. Their fourth generation trimmer features a cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents thanks to their advanced skin safe technology. and. You can do it in the shower because it's even waterproof. I tell you what, Tom, 2021 sucked in many ways. And that's why Manscaped is making a splash and upping your grooming game. Use the code ONION for 20% off plus free shipping at manscaped.com. I'm all in on confidence and smelling good this year. Join me with Manscaped. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code ONION at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. And use code ONION. Happy New Year to your balls. Billy. What is it, Tom? Well, I'm from Manchester. I know that. And as you know, one of the things that a lot of Mancunian men take very seriously alongside jackets and yeah. football is the hair. Oh, that's true. It's a big thing, isn't it? Liam Gallagher, the Manchester United and Manchester yeah. City footballers. The kind of vibe on the street, everyone's got to have kind of a cool or whatever they think is cool haircut. I've always been a little self-conscious about a receding hairline. Now, there is a solution out there oh, if you that. want to keep your hair. Yeah. And interestingly enough, it is. Keeps. Keeps offers an easy access to hair loss. They actually send yeah. prescription medication directly to your door and... If you're a little, you know, kind of self-conscious about getting something about hair loss through the door, don't worry because everything's kind of discreet and classy and uh, it's a way to keep hold of your hair if you feel like you want to do that. Which a lot of people would like to do. True. Because Dom, mm. two out of three men will have some sort of hair loss by the time they're 35. Is that right? That's more than 50 million men in the US who suffer from male pattern baldness. Now, Dom, mm. there is only two FDA-approved medications that can help prevent hair loss. How many do you think Keeps has? Tell me. Two. Both of them. Wow. Keeps offers a simple, stress-free way to keep your hair convenient. Virtual doctor consultations and medications, as I said, delivered directly to your door every three months. You don't even need to leave your home to if, keep your hair. If you are ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to K-E-E-P-S dot com slash onion to receive your first month of treatment for free. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash onion to get your first month free. K-E-E-P-S dot com slash onion. But I tell you what, me and Dom... Love this game called League of Legends. Yeah. And we're always trying to get people on our team because we're trying to go pro. See, now, this is the problem. This is like multiplayer. So yeah. you play with human beings. Oh, yeah. Mm, no. I know. No, you're playing with us. Okay. Games, like, you love like, it. You don't like playing with other humans. You like a self-contained yeah. you in the computer. I like to team. play against a, a computer program that is very finely tuned to let me win. Yeah. Ah. You know? Yeah. I don't like to be beaten. So you like know. to win. I do. You might not like League of Legends. I, re I, read, <laughs> I read that when a male loses, his testosterone level drops. <gasps> so right? I just feel like on a health basis, it's yeah. better for me. Well, here's like the thing balls, with League of Legends. Yeah. It's important for your balls. Yeah, uh, yeah it's exactly. very important. Exactly. So with well League said. of Legends, not only do you lose, which I lose all the time. We all do. But. Because we don't, it's, it's a team of five. So mm -hmm. sometimes it's just me and Dom or me, Dom, and one other. So there's two people that we don't know or three people that we don't know yeah. on our team. Yeah. yeah. And they will say things to me like, 
never play this game again. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, they yeah. will write that. Delete this game. You are the worst player I've ever seen. <laughs> and sometimes even worse stuff that I'm not even going to say because it's kind of hateful and awful. This is why. Yeah. This is I'm people- cynical enough about human beings. If, if I get online, like I went, I went, we were, uh, Mark and I we did videos yeah, together. Yeah, he's great. We went on and did multiplayer on, I think, some Star Wars game. And it, we were so bad. It, it, we, it devolved into, can you last four seconds? Wow. Can, and I would count it off. One, 1,000, two, <laughs> smack, dead, dead. Wow. Re, respawn, one, 1,000, and he got to four one time before somebody got Well, it. this thing, you'll, you'll, you know, the average game is 35, 40 minutes or something like that, and you'll die multiple times. But I turn off the chat, and we've talked about yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. So I turn off the allied chat yeah. and the enemy chat. So no one speaks to me. No one can Good. speak to me. But Billy has it on. I have it on. It's it. terrible. <laughs> For even the bad guys, even the enemy. Everything. Yeah. I hear what they're all saying about me. It's awful. <laughs> in, 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 in the League of Legends community, they call that flaming. Oh. When people flame you. They really do flame you. But it well. doesn't bother you. Well, no, yeah, it does. It does bother him. It does. So yeah. Turn it off. Uh, yeah, maybe I need to. But he doesn't, he's not a very fast typer when he's playing the game. So I think sometimes Billy wants to like pause the game and then type something kind of sweet and switched on like, you know, why would you be so cruel? But you don't, you never have time. So you're just like, oh, you said something mean to me. I'm always like, turn it off, Billy, turn it off. It's not helping your game. But I will say, and we know this, the average, because you can go professional with this game. There yeah. are professional gamers that yeah. do it for a living and all that kind of stuff. The average professional, the, the top 1% highest level players of League of Legends on the planet that do it for a living win 50% of the time. They win half of their games. Yeah. The other wow. half they lose. So there's no shame in us losing wow. six games in a row, which happens quite often. Yeah. But you've recently become much, much improved. I've got a little bit better. Yeah. People I'm don't t- say as horrible things anymore. That's I'm terrible. Testosterone if, levels have went through the roof. Yeah, I tell you, you what, James. must be massive. <laughs> yeah. If I'm playing against a computer and I lose, yeah. I'm like, F you, buddy. I have a magic button. And I go to settings, easy, click, and suddenly, He's meat. And Back I'm, in your... Boom. Just, well, uh, yeah, the, because there's there's a difficulty setting. Yeah. Easy, medium, and hard yeah. or whatever. And I'm like, I usually play on medium, but if I run into any trouble, I'm like, uh-huh, I've got a magic button. Mm-hmm. Nice. That'd and, be and a good boom. button Done. for life. Dead. And what is that game? What is the game that you that you play more often than not? Uh, they always change. I like, I like big world games Same. where you can explore and also shoot Same. people in the face. So, kind of like fine stuff. Fantasy or like mm-hmm. real stuff? Do you like like Call of Duty or do you like like Skyrim or World of Warcraft? All of it. Because I like the big world things yeah. as well. Yeah. I like, I like the game starting and the, the basic next three or four hours of the kind of gradual tutorial is we're going to introduce you into a very overwhelming world and we're going to allow you to figure it all out for yourself. Those yeah. are my favorite types yeah. of games. Far Cry 6, I'm enjoying. Oh, okay. Right. Far Cry is great. That series is great because like, you'll just be trying to do some, you know, be trying to get from A to B to do your mission and suddenly like a leopard will just come out of nowhere and give you trouble or like some rebels will be fighting the government and then they get in your way and you have to deal with that. And just like, it's chaos. It's just really? like, I, I can't, and you like forget. <laughs> Why was I walking up the hill anyway? Yeah. I'm just trying to survive at this point. Yeah. Really, but, yeah. I'm playing Assassin's Creed Odyssey right now, or yeah. I was during the last uh, job that I did. And it's all based in ancient Greece and it, a lot of historical things. So you're meeting historical characters and being involved in historical events where someone's yeah. being executed or there's a council or there's a group of people teaching a certain idea and these are things that actually happened in ancient greek greece at that time so there's a level of uh of education going on at the same time but i I love the big world uh, yeah i love assassin's creed for that Mm, reason it's very cool and the last time i think i saw you play a game weren't you starting to wear the things (gasps) like virtual reality actually going in into the game yeah are you still doing that I'm waiting for the graphics to get a little better. Uh, I, I think with once they come out with the new virtual reality for yeah. the new PlayStation, there will be improved. They're going to have eye tracking for it and everything, and I think it's going to be more immersive. Right now, it's a little, uh, it, it's okay. Like uh, for for Resident Evil Seven, mm. they have they had uh, not the most recent Resident Evil called Village, but the one before that, they had a virtual reality that mm. was. Fabulous. That's a horror type vibe, oh, yeah. right? 
can't. I can't play horror games. Oh, don't do not. Do not play scared? that one. Do you get scared? Well, I do get scared, do but it's not necessarily that I won't play it because I because I get scared, which I might do. Yeah. I just, unfortunately for me, I I find it. I find it leaks into a slight sense of negativity for me mm. in some way. My next day, I'm like, there's a, you know, the world is a grimy, dirty place that's trying to attack me. Like when I played GTA yeah. 3, when I first came to LA, I played Grand Theft Auto 3 for months. And what now when I hear Woo, a siren, <laughs> I, don't, I don't think here comes the police or an ambulance. I think I'm in the game and, and also the driving in the game, it started to leak into the way that I was driving around the streets of LA and I thought, that's probably not a good idea. <laughs> I mean, the great thing that I love about uh, about League of oh. Legends is it's so bizarre and it's so outlandish, the characters that you play, that you could never really think it's real life. It's such a uh, fantasy, right? Yeah. yeah. You got something weird on your eyebrow. What is that? Just maybe the way it's growing. What's the word you like to say? Detritus. I said detritus. Did you have a little bit of detritus? Yeah. Well, should we? Oh, that we got a perfect. riddle. Should we do a riddle now? Shall we? The first riddle, and they're all from uh, John. They're all from, uh, is that from Johnny mm -hmm. Clues? Yeah. Hey, Johnny Clues. Mm. That's our normal producer. He's not here. Okay. We don't know where he is. No, we don't. He's, He's not been hiding. here for two weeks. He's abandoned us, but to be fair, I prefer Mackenzie. Do you? On you go, Mackenzie. All right, first one. You see a boat filled with people. It has not sunk, but when you look again, you don't see a single person on the boat. Why? All right, everyone just right. calm down for right. a second. Well, if, if the boat had sunk, you wouldn't see the boat either, would you? Good point. You, you see, see a, a boat, boat filled with people. It has not sunk, but when you look again at the boat, you don't see a single person. I've got it. You've been struck you? blind. No, I think well, I've got it. Go on. They're all married. Yep. There's oh. no single person. Oh. oh. Oh, <laughs> thank you, thank you. That is the correct answer. Hey, that is great, Billy. Good boy. Well right? done. <laughs> nice work on the riddle solving. That's thank you. Yeah. Logic. Give us number That's all two. That was logic. Come on, Mackenzie. Right. Give us number two. What English word has three consecutive double letters? Three consecutive. Terrible. No. <laughs> <laughs> three consecutive double. Letters. Come on, James. You're a man of the theatre, a man of words. Mm -hmm. No doubt, a Shakespeare Not a scholar. Spelling. That's mm. difficult. Mackenzie, uh, do you have the answer there? I do. And would, also, she'd probably get it because she's uh, Mackenzie, Mackenzie Grammar. Mackenzie Grammar. Messianic. Do you, do you mm. think it, would it be? Would we get it very easily if you gave us the first letter of the yeah, word? Go. No. No, it's three. What? Billy, your podcast is going to make me look stupid now. No, no. Oh, just... my God. I've got oh, to no, go we'll... call my publicist. This is <laughs> train wreck. <laughs> let, 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 if, if she gives, do you think All that right. would be fair? First What's... letter of the word is B. Is B. Bubble. No, it's three. <laughs> what? Consecutive double letters. Bar. Boo. When one says three consecutive double letters, that is that just means that the the oh. letters are double. They're not like B B C C D D. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just consecutive. So consecutive doesn't even need to be in the riddle. Well, a minute. Three what does? So letters. it's not consecutive. Okay. No, it is. It's consecutive. No, but that, that it, it, so they're not right next to each other. It's not like B B U U. No, it'd be D. like they M are, but it doesn't have to be like you know like alphabetically like in order. It, but it's. Two, two, two. Yeah, oh, but without a vowel good. or anything in between them. Right. One of them might be a vowel. Yeah, they I think they are, right? Probably. So it's a uh, double vowel. Right. When do you get a double vowel in a word? Well, look, I think the double I think the last vowel. of the double letters. Ooh, double oh, e. Mm -hmm. I think the last of the double letters is an S. So it'd be something like meaningfulness. Then you got the two S's <sighs> at the end, and then we're looking for two. Before that, I bet the last two is an S. And I think a double O for the vowel would make sense. Yeah. Bub bubbliness. That's two. We're just looking but for did it. But are the double letters right next to each other? Mm -hmm. okay. I will give you a hint. It's not, it does not end with an S. It doesn't oh, end with an S. I've ruined it, guys. <sighs> right. Give is, us, here's a hint you could give us. What does the word mean? Oof. Is that too much of an easy question? No. Clue? I is think it, that would give it away. Yes, yeah, um, I told you. Is it a word it's that a we know? It's a type of person. A Do, type of person. 
Do we use it in normal English vocabulary or would it be kind of a unique word that you don't hear that often? I wouldn't say it's super unique that you wouldn't hear it too often. But Malicious? It starts with a B. B. And, it, and it's, a way, it's, it's a way to describe… Bubblicious. It's a way to describe a person. A personality trait. Um, it's a way to describe Someone's a person's job. job. A person's <gasps> a job. A job. British job. Uh, Why is it British? I mean, because she said it was a British job. Brit- no, I didn't. A no, British didn't. job? You're drunk. <laughs> Sending about a British job. <laughs> it's a job that's done all over. Would this job be done in Australia? Sure. China? Hmm? Bulgaria. <laughs> yes. Uh, okay, let me… Some, a way I'll give you another describe. hint without giving it away. Um, it's something that we probably see every day that this person does. It starts Leesman. with a B. I'm just going to sit in my Kirk light so I appear intelligent. <laughs> yeah, I just so don't have to prove that I it am does. or not. Meaning Your Kirk lights only went to one eye now. What English word has three consecutive double letters and it's a way to describe… A job. Someone's job. Someone's job. Meaning. James, don't you, don't you, you're, are you still thinking? You look as deep if you're, thoughts. you're acting as if it's you're thinking. It's tending more toward philosophy, so I'm not being helpful. Bob. I don't, I Bob, think at this point, I don't think we're going to get to I it. I think we will. Is the job in some way magical? If you open. Abadasher. If you open. A book. Book binder. No, open a, a librarian. A b- open b- a b- biblio, 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 bibliotheque. A bibliotech. A bib- is it that? Does it begin with bib? It it's not biblioteca, but it's it's it has to do with that. Has to do with reading. What just as reading. a hint, what are the first three syllables literary, of the word? <laughs> lit, literary literary as, as a hint. As a hint. <laughs> yeah. Lit l- 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 liter- uh, it has to do with reading. Listening. Vol- it's someone's job. Yeah. Librarian. But we see it Li- every day. An- another another word. Book. Another word for a librarian. See, a, I don't. Bibli- a bibliographer. A bu- biographer. But, uh, a bib- is it bibli? Does it start with bibli? Mm-mm. That's only two syllables. That's but, allowable. Bar- I can give you another hint. Yeah, so yeah. the first um, part of the word is book. Book. Bookworm, book, bookish, bookish, bookishness, bookish, bookish, bookie, bookie, bookie. We're not very good at this one. Are we? <laughs> bookie. It, it ends with bookmakering. An R. It ends with bookmaker. 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 Book close. Bookmaker. Bookbinder. Book. 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 Bookbind. <laughs> book. Da- book uh, what? Bookkeeper. Yes. Bookkeeper. Uh, bookkeeper. I gotta sit my life. I gotta sit my life. That was easy. James Masters, James. the master of riddles. Yeah. One point for James, one point for the other. That means I have to get this, otherwise I'm going to stab it's myself. A, it's a disappointment. Yeah, it is. Okay, thanks. Mackenzie. Put a timer on this one. one because we can't do a whole hour on, a, yeah. on, <laughs> on Josh Riddles. All right. A woman shoots her husband, then holds him underwater for five minutes. Next, she hangs him. Right after, they enjoy a lovely dinner. Explain. She's a cannibal. She's a what? Cannibal. I thought you said a cantaloupe. No. She's a male. A cannibal. Shoots her husband. Is she a cinematographer? Is she a, is she a, is a, a director? <laughs> no. Sh- I'm so good. Shoots her husband as in with a camera. Does she, is she shooting him on in a show, in a TV show? Holds him underwater for five minutes. Oh, she's a photographer. She shoots him with a camera. She, gets, Ooh, she takes the oh. film, puts it in the mm. processing thing in the water, and she hangs him over the bath so that he dries. But and right after, the they have a lovely be. dinner. Because they is that correct? Yep. Yeah, she took his picture and developed it in a, in a dark room. One for you, one for James, Damn. one for Dan. We absolutely <laughs> kicked it in. Yeah, that could guys. not have been better. <laughs> Mackenzie, thank you. Thank you for the hint. Thank you, Mackenzie Grammar. Yeah. Mackenzie Grammar. There's Brilliant. never drama with Mackenzie Grammar. <sighs> Billy, what? Growing up, cereal was one of my favorite parts of not only the morning watching cartoons, but also coming home from school. I would make myself a, ma- a nice big bowl of cereal, some milk in there, and enjoy it. Now, as a kid, I wasn't aware that a lot of sugar gets hidden in cereal. So it might not necessarily be the most healthy thing to eat as a kid or 
as a grown-up, but I've got a solution for you, and it is Magic Spoon cereal. You tell me what's so great about Magic Spoon. I'm going to give you some facts, Dom, no about Magic Spoon cereal. Zero grams of sugar. What? 13 to 14 grams of protein and only four net grams of carbs in each serving. Wow. Only 140 calories a serving. It's keto-friendly, gluten-free, grain-free, soy-free, and low-carb. Build your own box. Available flavors to build your very own custom bundle are cocoa, fruity, frosted, peanut butter, blueberry, cinnamon, cookies and cream, and maple waffle. Not only that, but because of the extreme popularity of cookies and cream and maple waffle flavor, they've now made those those flavors permanent. When these <gasps> flavors were first introduced for yep. Limited Town, they sold out so quickly that they listened to the people eating the cereal and they said, right, we're going to bring that back. Permanent. Delicious. I really like the cookies and cream one. It's, it's super duper tasty. So go to magicspoon.com slash onion to grab a custom bundle of cereal and try it today and be sure to use the promo code onion at checkout to save five dollars off your order and magic spoon is so confident in their product it's backed with a hundred percent happiness guarantee so if you don't like it for any reason they'll refund your money no questions asked lovely remember get your next delicious bowl of guilt-free cereal at magicspoon.com slash onion and use the code onion to save five dollars off Thank you, Magic Spoon, for sponsoring this episode. Guys, are you struggling to finish off your projects by the end of the calendar year? Maybe your mind is distracted with food that you're going to cook or Christmas presents you need to buy or where you're going to go for New Year's. Well, let me tell you, if you need a little bit of help with your vocabulary, oh, yes. your spelling, mm -hmm. maybe where to put in a, an exclamation point instead of a question mark, you need to use Grammarly. Grammarly helps you communicate clearly and kindly even when you're in a hurry. That's it, Tom. Sometimes you're writing something and you get into it and, and, you, and you go off in tangents. We go off in tangents sometimes. Yeah, Have do. you noticed that? Yeah. Well, if you do that, Grammarly will help oh, reel you back in. Or you can't find a word. Mm. It will help you. Oh, press that and you'll find a synonym. Yeah, synonym. Maybe, yeah. You, maybe you said you want to say the word happy, but you don't want to say the word happy very close to the, the fact that you've just said the word happy. Mm -hmm. So you ask Grammarly, and it says, well, why don't you use the word delighted? Or, exactly. Yeah, something like that. And if, if you're worried about what kind of tone has this came across as, well, am I being friendly? Mm. Am I being formal? It's got a tone detector. Brilliant. So it will tell you, I tell you what, that's a little bit too formal for a letter to your grandmother. Brilliant. It'll help you out like that, Tom. Yeah, striking a friendly tone for a broad audience, Grammarly can help you write it like you would normally say it in a conversation, like Billy said. Also, it, you can help work on your confidence. Grammarly turns, I think we should keep the logo small, into let's keep the logo small. It's just a, a better way to use the English language. It's helping you out, Tom. So take the stress out of the words right away with Grammarly. Our listeners get 20% off Grammarly Premium at Grammarly.com slash onion. That's 20% off at G-R-A-M-M-A-R-L-Y dot com slash onion. Now, James, let's talk Sorry, about your band a little bit because Billy's yeah. in a band too. Ghost of the Robot. Where are you guys at with that? And how did it come about? We are working on our fifth album. Wow. Uh, and the bassist, Kevin, is finally letting us know that he writes songs. Oh. And he is writing incredibly good songs. He might be like one. Paul McCartney. He might be. He like, might be. Wow. He might be. Um, yeah, a new one that he just uh, gave us with San Francisco, and it's just so beautiful. Oh, brilliant. Um, yeah, we, uh, uh, I was, I was, I had been asked to play uh, clubs around Los Angeles uh, when I was doing Buffy. Uh, someone asked me in an interview, do you play any mu musical instruments? It's, you know, And I said, yeah, guitar. And I told him I used to play in clubs when I was 13 years old. Only playing James Taylor. I refused to play anything but James Taylor. So, <laughs> well so that went out. And somebody uh, that owned a club, I think it was 14 Below in Santa Monica, had the bright idea, well, if we, if we get this guy, if we book him, it doesn't matter if he's any good or not. We'll sell a lot of tickets because right. he's on television. Right. Sure enough, I went and did it. And I wasn't very good. And we, but we sold a lot of tickets. And so other clubs started asking me. And uh, 
my nadir was playing the Key Club, which is a big, big club in uh, in Los Angeles, mm. and um, and I wasn't very good, and I knew it. And uh, they came backstage and they said, "Pink is in the audience. She can't wait to. She's a fan. She can't wait to hear you sing." And oh, I was like, "Oh great. no, this is horrible." She's gonna. And sure enough. By the end of the show, Pink was nowhere to be seen. Oh, oh that's no. it. She just like ran for the exit. Like, oh. I wonder how I wonder how long she lasted. Oh, probably. I don't know. <laughs> like three bars. I don't know. Quite so, fancy Pink. Do you? <laughs> do you fancy her? Oh, oh you fancy awesome. Jim? Awesome. You, you well, fancy, uh, yeah, she's awesome. I, I've always been quite it's attracted. Amazing. I liked her, her punky haircut. I find yeah. it amazing that she can sing while she's up on like Incredible. throwing around on. On cables and oh, all that. She's yeah. an athlete. Right? It's yeah. amazing, isn't it? Yeah. But so, so, so you were doing that as a solo show. Yeah. So I, I would try to get better, and I would rehearse, and I had a microphone, uh -huh. and I had a, you know, and I had what my neighbors were calling the karaoke machine. They hated me for this, and I was doing that. And this seventeen-year-old kid came up to my door and said, "I'm hearing your music. Um, my name is Charlie. I just moved to town, and I have a band." up in Sacramento called Power Animal. We were getting radio play up there and we cut an album and I'm trying to sell it down here. Um, and we started talking and he gave me one of his CDs and I listened to it. It was just freaking amazing. Just yeah. so surprising and so, um, I don't know, singular. Uh, it has a singular sound to it. Yeah. And, um, and he, he tried to shop the, the album and, and what do you know? Couldn't get in the door. Mm -hmm. uh, and... Uh, we decided to, uh, we started talking about what kind of songs we liked and we started playing music for each other and we decided to to start a band. And uh, he said, if you have your own guys for the rhythm section for drums and, and bass, you know, I'll be doing lead. You can do rhythm guitar, but we need uh, drums and bass. I've got two guys that were in Power Animal. I think they're really good. Uh, if you have your own guys, of course, but maybe want to listen to you, to my guys too. And I said, sure. Why don't we have them out to LA? What are they doing next weekend? And he goes, well... Next weekend, they're, they're, right now they're in um, New York playing jazz at Lincoln Center, but they'll be back in a week and a half. And I was like, and how old are they? And he's like 16 and 17. I was like, yeah, let's have them out. Let's, yeah, yeah, yeah. let's, let's go meet these people. And so uh, I met Kevin and Aaron, uh, and they were just absolutely fabulous. They just had, they had the combination of jazz, which, which meant they could bubble, right. but they had the power of youth. They were just driving uh, and within a month, we were cutting our first album. And um, as soon as that was pressed, we toured it out to to Europe and did a bunch of two major European tours, a lot of shows all around the U.S. And um, uh, and we're still together. And, and why Ghost of the Robot? What's that about? Um, I was concerned that, like, I would I, by that by this time I was famous because of Buffy. And I was concerned that I was going to make money, I was going to get success, and at the end of the whole process, I was going to end up a douchebag. And at that point, this whole experience was going to be a bad thing in my life if mm. that happened. So I was concerned that I would become like the Tin Man, that this, that this success was, because I think that success is bad for the human soul. I think it, it tempts people to think, tempts me to think that I'm different than other people, that other people can't understand my problems and that I can't connect with people. Mm -hmm. And so I was, I was concerned that I would be like the Tin Man in The Wizard of Oz, yeah. hollow on the inside. Right. And uh, Charlie was like, ah, that's great. I think of myself as a robot, like an R2-D2, this is a 17-year-old talk. Right. He's like, I'm I'm in the desert of Tantooine and I'm and I'm trying to get over the rocks and I can barely get from A to B on my wheels. And then a and then a a, a woman will come along like a pterodactyl and swoop down and scoop me up and take me up to the clouds. And it's amazing, amazing. And then she drops me and I fall to earth and bam, crash. And then I've got to figure out how to get myself back up on my wheels and continue my journey. And so the central idea, and I was like, robot, you know, that's that, that's a that's a nice image. Um, and we came to ghost because that was kind of like what I was afraid that I would lose the, inter the internal, mm -hmm. you know? So we were talking about ghost. We we're talking about robot. And at some point the band, uh, I went over to this, one of their houses and they were like, we came up with it. It's robot ghost. It's obvious. And I was like, okay, that's great. Robot ghost is really good actually. But if you flip it around, if you can go ghost of the robot, it's dun, 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 dun. Rhythmically, yeah. it's just yeah. kind of nice. Yeah, it's so. easier on the ear, isn't it? Ghost of the Robot instead yeah. of Robot Ghost. Yeah. It's a great yeah. name for a band. Yeah. That's uh, and, uh, that, that thinking that you had of, you know, going through sort of fame and at the end of it thinking, oh, actually, that was a, 
a bad thing. Did that come, do you think, because you, you started off in theatre, right? Yeah. And you had your own theatre company. Like yeah. your actual theatre company. You yeah. were a producer yeah. of a theatre company. Could you talk a little bit about that? So you yeah. you, you were at drama school in, in New York? Mm-hmm. At Juilliard, yeah. So you did Juilliard. Tell us what happened when you left there then. Well, they kicked me out. Oh. So, yeah, well, they said I that I was no good at acting and oh, I should really? quit before I got At better. what point in your training was that? They cu- they cut half the class at two years. Right. And that's they cut standard. That that's yeah. what they did. Well, they, they don't do that did? anymore because uh-huh. it was really, really cruel. Very but, cruel. Yeah, yeah, but they did it back then. Did you still wow. pay for the full thing or did they give you half your money back? I didn't pay for it. I was on scholarship. But, I mean, in general, when that used to happen, would they give you half your money back when they kick you out halfway through? No, I think because you just pay year to year, you know, one bit at a time. So... Yeah, I was. Oh, uh, well, that's painful, isn't that's it? That's awful. That's horrible. As an actor, that's <laughs> just like. I mean, we used to being rejected in terms of you didn't get the job, you didn't get, you know, you didn't get that. They gave the job to someone else, but not. We will not allow you to train to be an actor anymore. That's yeah. that brutal. is, <laughs> really especially brilliant. from an acting school who knows how painful that. Yeah. Was. Yeah. 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 That is wow. But that's it, really. It lit the cold. fire in my belly. Uh, yeah, that yeah. the old. You know, oh, did um, it? Oh, yeah. But it could have went the other way. Yeah, yeah. Easy, and I'm sure it does for a for lot some of people. people. Yeah, yeah. And well, it convinces Kill a lot of people that it's not a fun thing to do. When in fact, it really is. It's just, yeah, it's not fun to get the job, but the job is actually really fun. Well, we yeah. all have to get used to rejection in our at being whatever successful actors. We all have to be very good with rejection because a huge amount of you our know, job is rejection. Yeah, and you know what helped me with that was having a theater company, was doing casting. Right. Uh, because we would mm. we would have mammoth casting sessions because we couldn't pay a lot of money. So we knew that we, we were going to be trying to find the young actors that were destined to go on and be fully professional. But we had to grab those people out of the sea of people around them and find them. So we would, we, we, once a month, we would spend the whole weekend auditioning people right. and of course when you're casting a specific play you have to go through the auditions for that as well and you just you just realize there's so much more than just how good of a person they are or how beautiful they are or how any of the things that i would assume was the reason i didn't get a role might not be it at all mm-hmm. you know, it might just be the height of, right. of you know stacking up you know with the other cast or it just mm-hmm. might be how the might be a million things. Yeah. Uh, and that that really helped me. I remember when I came down to Los Angeles, I was like, you know what? Someone's looking for me today, right now. Yeah. They woke up this morning hoping to meet me, although they've never met me. They've, they've got in their mind, they want specifically me, mm-hmm. and we're probably not going to meet each other. Right. But if I can keep going out right. and meeting people, yeah, sometime, at some point, I'm going to meet that person because it's a big town. Yeah. Someone's looking at for, me, for me all the time. Yeah. I've just got to keep out there until we meet. I remember um, having an audition where I walked through the door I've told you this story before. And the lady looked up. As I walked through the door, the lady looked up and went, no. And I just went, oh. <laughs> and as I turned around, there's a, there was a height thing on the, on the Was side. it yeah, really? It, and it was like 6'1 or 6'2, <laughs> so I was way up. I was like, oh, you, fuck, you won't even let me just read it. No. Awful. No. I, I, d- d- Dom knows this story. When I, when I uh, started drama school, because I went to drama school in Scotland, mm-hmm. and uh, the head of the school came in to give the the actors of that year their the talk for entering the school, you know, and they did that thing of um, you know, if anyone here feels like they can do anything else, please go and do it. Yeah. He says because an actor is it's a different art. He says if you're a painter, people will say I hate that painting. If you're a poet, they'll hate the poem. But if you're an actor. They hate you. Mm-hmm. And he says, and that is a painful thing to go through your life, yeah. you know. And, uh, you know, and there's something in your story of Julia. I can't believe they, they would do it's that. Very I cruel. didn't know that, not just about you, but about historically. Yeah. They would get rid of half the class yeah. and say, you shouldn't be here. Well, they, they took a special umbrage to me. Because oh, did I they? Was, yeah, because at one point I was in a, <laughs> I was in a, it was our first play of the first year, and it was the, um, they called it the Discovery Play, and we were doing Troilus and Cressida, which is a, not mm. one of Shakespeare's best. Yeah. yeah. And uh, it was horrible. It was being directed by one of the best Broadway actors ever, Marion Seldes, just luminous. Right. And as good as she is as an actor, that's how bad she is. As a oh, She's right. dead now, so it's hard to say. God rest her soul. Sorry, man. You know it's true. So, um, 
So we were, I had come from a two-year program in Southern California that was very, very good. That was apprenticeship where you just watch really good actors go from first rehearsal to final performance. And uh-huh. the directors were some of the finest on the West Coast. It was really a good experience. Right. And I was not used to being in bad plays or just unspeakably horrible. Mm. And Marion just kept saying, oh, my birds, keep exploring, keep exploring, you go, you go. And the thing is just unwatchable. And we're three days away from an audience. And I'm like, I'm at Juilliard. And this is horrible. There's got to be a reason for this. There's mm. something that I, I need to figure out. Yeah. Why is it called the Discovery Play? And I started asking around and no one could tell me why it was called this. And I said, okay, I got, that's the test. We got to figure out. Yeah. What are we supposed to discover? And then I thought, maybe it's not our discovery. Maybe it's the school's discovery of the kind of, the kind of class that we are. If we're left right. to our own devices, are we just are we going to tell a story, or are we just going right. to take Right. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, if if no one gives us help, and I said, well, this ca- this class has me. So I'm, I stood up and I said, guys, this is unbearably boring. This is horrible. The kind of stuff we're doing is great for the first week of rehearsal, but we've got to make choices. We've got to tell a story because people are going to come and share a piece of their life with us that they'll never get back. And on some level, they'll never forgive us if we waste that time. Yeah. So let's make some choice. Let's block the play, please. (laughs) You know, and that just let, that just, there was, I apparently was wrong. Mm. That wasn't the discovery we're supposed to make. It was just that that Marion was a bad director, and they thought I was just you know this this upstart young actor that knew better than everybody, right. and they labeled me as a as a jerk, and they just rode me for two years until they kicked me out. Oh great! <laughs> oh. And 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 oh, and then what? So you're in New York. So, you're yeah, not so I'm in New York, school anymore. Try to, tr- I'm trying to. By the time I get out of Juilliard, it's it's in the mid '80s, and um, uh, re, uh, the property rates had gone so far up in Manhattan that yep. all of the entry level theaters had closed down. All of off 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 Broadway, all that stuff is, was gone. Right. And just trying to to break into the larger houses, they, no one wanted to see me. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I was just bartending. And my girlfriend at the time, who later became my wife and producing partner, she came and said, "I am going to Chicago. That's where it's all at right now. It's not happening." Theater's not really happening in New York right now, but it's bubbling in Chicago. So I'm going. If you want to come with me, that's fine. If you don't, see you later. Mm. So I followed the woman out to, to Chicago <clears throat> and found a city that was absolutely on fire. You could not, you couldn't walk 10 blocks in Chicago without some little theater, some play happening in some little mm. storefront somewhere. It was just electric. And that's where you started your company? Yeah. Did you find the space? And then just thought, I'm going to do it. Or did you rent spaces? Rented. Okay. Rented. It was when we, we, by the, by our, we only did two shows in Chicago, but the second one was a hit. And at that point we thought, okay, we need a permanent space and we need to get a board of directors. We need to plant roots. Right. And the, the question was, do we, do we want to die in Chicago? And it gets cold in Chicago, the man. The windy city. Oh my God. And so uh, it was also happening in Seattle. Uh, that was bubbling up. There were plays coming out of Seattle and they were being produced elsewhere. And it, that seemed like another center at the time. Mm. I was in the early 90s, I guess. And uh, see. moved out to Seattle. And that's when we got a permanent space. And that's when we kind of like, we started churning out plays once a month. Mm. Just, have, you been, have you been to Seattle? Have I, yeah, yes. Amazing coffee. Look, Starbucks? Well, that is where Starbucks mm. is from, right? Pete's. But I also thought that alongside... Is it Portland, Oregon that also has like a crazy, crazy coffee scene? But the whole area. Seattle. I remember being in Seattle thinking, man, I wonder if Billy's been there because the coffee was just amazing. Yeah, I love coffee. Cafe love culture. Coffee. It was it was yeah. it was it had a cafe culture before Starbucks really took off around other places, but it was like Paris and Seattle. Right. Do you still do theater? Do you ever do theater now? I no, because I mean like I I I I'm thinking of doing this again. There's a um, LA Theater Works mm-hmm. uh, is a great thing uh, here in LA where you rehearse for like four days mm-hmm. and then you read the play in front of a live audience. You have four performances and then that is recorded and put out on NPR. Brilliant. Yeah. Radio play. And so I've done a lot of plays with them um, and I haven't done that for a while. Ah. Uh, but basically you, you do a play and they ask for three months of, yeah. your, of your life. And I've got kids in college and yeah. theater doesn't pay. I mean, the whole reason I came down here <clears throat> yeah. was to get them through college. And I told my kids like, 
you get the grades, I'll find the money. Okay. Go. And they have taken me up on this. And now my nice. daughter is pursuing a doctorate in mathematics and my son's in law school. So they're wow. just like, oh, you'll pay for, hmm, well, okay. I'll get the grades. No, no problem. So they have, they're doing everything I hope for, but it means that for a few more years anyway. You've got um, to make money. Yeah, and- I have this dream that I will go back to theater for sure. Running radio play ever. Oh, boy. Now, we James, talk- do you want to introduce... Well, we t- I, I said to James about the Eat the World thing, and he sent a very it, a very nice note back to me that made me laugh quite heavily. So, uh, shall I, do you want to introduce it, or shall I read the note? Oh, read or, the note. That's fine. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, or I'll honor this, whichever. Yeah. yeah. So, as I said, I said to James, you know, <laughs> I like me, this. me and Dom do this um, Eat the World segment, and uh, we'd like you to bring... We, we like people to talk about food that maybe they had growing up or neighborhood or, or you know, something from the country that they come from. Right. Something that reminds them of, um, of uh, growing up. And you said, that sounds like fun. My mother, God rest her soul. Can I read all of this? Is yeah, that please, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, my mother, God rest her soul, was a terrible cook. Just inexplicably Horrible. <laughs> Maybe she had a medical condition. Stunted taste buds, shriveled palate. Lord only knows. Point is, I have memory of boiled lima beans that are so bad as to be emotionally scarring. <laughs> so if you guys could take cheap frozen lima beans, boil them up so they're very dry, like desiccated, serve them without salt or butter, Ooh. seeing your faces eat them might heal my blackened heart. <laughs> <laughs> that's what we've got. <laughs> so we thought that was fantastic. And we've got Mackenzie to cook up some lovely, lovely lima beans. Now, is it lima or lima? Would you say lima or I, lima? I would say lima, but well, I, would I wouldn't say, lima say it as because well. It's, it's... Well, you haven't been. You've been saying... <laughs> 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 okay, lima beans, great. Now, so when your mum would make this, would this be a side dish? Would it come with some chicken and and some other vegetables, or would it just be yeah. a, a bowl of? It, no, that would be the vegetable of the day. You okay, know? and then there so would be this would some, be like, dried pork chop there, or like chicken livers. She loved that. And chicken oh, liver my dog. dad likes chicken livers. God. Barbecued chicken livers. Here comes <laughs> Leepor. Here comes Leepor. Oh, he's brought napkins. This. Right, come on, I man. think Just that's if you're wretch. Right. Okay. I, I'm a fan of beans. Oh, okay. I, I am messy. I'm good. Oh, really? Now, if you don't gag, I'm going to claim that Mackenzie is a better cook than my mom. That's what I'm going to say. No, we have. Unless like you go. Bean, me. No, like we have. That. You like a bean? I like don't a bean. You? Uh, what is it? A legume? Yeah, legume. Mm-hmm. I like now, a butter bean. Like my dad, I like a butter bean, a haricot bean. I like a, a, a lima bean. They're similar to a butter bean. Okay, I'm yeah. I'm okay with it, but oh we, no no no! Do you want to shelve your yeah stuff? yeah? So we've said Mackenzie, to Mackenzie grammar. We've said to Mackenzie, make them exactly as James remembers yeah. them with nothing, no so salt, talk, no butter. So talk us before we before we yeah. try and James just talk us through the preparation dinner and time. What, what we can? Expect I don't know here. how she did it because as I said, I was a kid, and you know very quickly what she was cunning at was though she. We immediately wanted to cook food. She did not have to get us ah, to learn how to cook. We, we couldn't wait until ah, we were to allowed to cook our own food because we were just horrified about what we were having to eat. Right. She would set a timer. She would serve us stuff like this. And she would set a timer that we had to finish the food. Oh. It was. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, it's horrible. Yeah. So. So, so here we are. She just didn't And have this is why you food. found it quite easy to and be I haven't, vampiric uh, thin. Yeah. Because food is horrible. You so haven't eaten either. them since. Do you have an since aversion? I have not. Oh, really? I have not. Not since right, I was going to give ten years give old. Them a go. Oh yeah. Do you remember that? Good job. Good job, Mackenzie. I mean, they very quickly do oh, desiccate in your mouth, don't they? That's it. Yeah, it does. Um, they just sucks all the moisture out. Mm, it's like yeah. An astringent. And um, yeah, and we'd have about that much, and you'd have to you'd have to finish them. Did and you what would it? And there'd be like a pork chop. Oh, uh, some dried out. Piece of meat. Did Nothing you, green. Did your that. mum serve them because she'd read an article saying that lima beans were really healthy or that they were good for you? Or was I don't there a know reason? Why. Did she, she like just, them? Would she wolf them down and be like, "What are you doing? They're fantastic." <laughs> I was just, I was, I was consumed by my own misery and self pity, and I yeah. wasn't noticing her reaction to the lima beans at all. I was just feeling sorry for myself. Here's the These thing. are really horrible. I mean, you did a good I mean, job. It's, it's completely dull. 
bland. Yeah. And gritty, kind of mealy. Yeah, it's great. Honestly, I don't think they're unpleasant. Really? They're just boring. They're just... Oh, God. No, but, no but if you had them every week... Well, oh, every week. Yeah. You know? So see this... Um, I'm, uh, why am I having another? I had one. Yeah, yeah don't it? put yourself wow. through I'm too much time. I actually quite like them. <laughs> so when I, when I started playing in a band, yeah. with this, this guy, Billy Johnson, that I played in a band with... BJ. BJ. I would go up to his house and we'd play guitar together, you know, and... and dream about being in a, in a rock band. And I remember his mum would bring his dinner in to his room while we were playing. And he used to open the window of his bedroom and just scrape the dinner up. He lived two up, so just into the backyard. Wow, it was that bad? Well, I don't know. I've, I've mentioned it to him, but he's never really kind of told me the whole story. He wouldn't, but not the whole lot, but yeah. I think he probably didn't like his mum to know that he'd left some. What, do you remember him scraping off baked beans? and? I can't even remember. Did she I'll... bring any food for you? Or no, it was just I a subtle so. kind of message? I think Here's... it was a subtle message, you shouldn't be here. I think. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty cool. Scav our food. No, I used to love food. I still do. So I, do, I wonder why I didn't eat it. Rather than him, maybe that's why it stuck in my head. I got interested in magic because the the trick was to get this kind of stuff into your lap, like get a, get a napkin on your lap and ah. and pretend to eat it, and then get a little bit on your. Oh, and she yeah. wasn't looking, so you could like put it in your pants and get rid of it later. And I remember just thinking, magicians have it made; they can they can get that done. Oh, well, my parents yeah. laugh at me now, and we've all laughed at it when I when I became an adult, where they would because I was a very fussy eater as a kid, and they said we. We would watch you as a kid, put a thump in your mouth, and then go, I've got to the toilet. And go, <laughs> yeah, you can go to the toilet. Have you got something in your mouth? No, no, no. <laughs> and then I'd come back and be like, okay, great. And then two minutes later, I'd do the same thing. And they said we would just sit there at dinner and just laugh <laughs> at you, thinking that you were pulling the wool over our eyes. Or like hiding stuff in the side of a chair and stuff like that. Here's, here's something I remember from, Very from New Zealand. Um, and if you can tell me if this is. is true or if I've made it up in my mind, yeah. but your brother came to visit Matt, Matt, and he he story. cooked dinner, yeah. and you you hated it so much yeah. that you ordered a pizza, yeah, and he didn't know, and stuck it in your spare room, yeah. and then while you guys were at dinner, you just nip off to the spare room and have a slice of pizza. <laughs> yeah. Is that true? It's true. So this is I love it now, but at the time. I had a strong aversion to broccoli. Uh, and my brother made like a broccoli bake, which is basically like oven baked broccoli with a bit of cheese and maybe some breadcrumbs and something. Yeah. And he thought it was the bee's knees. And at the time, I love broccoli now, at the time, it was my least favorite vegetable. Yeah. So he made a big deal. I was at work all day and I came home and he was like, don't worry about dinner, I made you this big broccoli bake. And I was like, I'm not gonna eat it. So I secretly ordered a pizza when it showed up. Big pizza. I hid it in my spare room, and then yeah. I love that you're kind-hearted enough to to hide the pizza. Well, also I didn't want to get teased because I knew that my brother, if he found out that I wasn't eating the um, the broccoli bait, he'd give me a hard time because he always used to he, he used to call me a little bird when I was a kid. He was like, right. "Oh, you you eat your food like a little baby bird, like picking at something," which is true. Uh -huh. I'm quite picky. I have to say, James. I'm still eating these. Okay, but I, the truth I is, I think it's your memory. No, no, right? this is also true. This Go is also on. true. A child has four times the amount of taste buds as an adult. Is that right? Yeah, our, our taste buds die off as we enter into adulthood. So we don't know the pain that we're putting kids through. Right. When they say, ew, this is horrible, it's because they're tasting something that we can't. Eat. Right. That's why we, we get more accustomed to spicy food as we get older and stuff like that. Yep. You want to read a little blurb? Is it Lima or Lima? I think it's... I, Lima. I would but, say lima. Well, like, Mackenzie has been kind enough to also cook some lima beans uh, with some um, actual flavor in it, have you? Garlic and salt. Yeah, so we've got some garlic, salt, See, garlic bit of a flavor. Anything. So maybe you could have a taste. We could change your whole. Maybe I will. <sighs> that would. And, and then you just absolutely love it. And let me see if you ended up loving it, James. Okay. Then the 20th of no chance April hell, every yes. year, 20th of April. You would love it because that's National Lima Bean Respect Day. <laughs> Did you know that? It has a day. Everything has a day these days, doesn't it? Well, to get a little serious for a second, although, you know, not crazy serious, but just to, you know, be frank about it, today is World AIDS Day. 
Oh, well, yeah. December I can 3rd see that. is World AIDS Day as well, a way of, you know, remembering. Recognizing. And, yeah, well, that's great. That deserves a day. But at I'm not sure be a national, Lima, really. really. At some point, there'll be a national COVID day. Is it Lima Here or comes, Lima? I think it's Lima. Here right. comes Mackenzie Grammar. Oh, we'll scoop a bit on top. That's a good idea. Hold on. Oh, yes. Let's see. It's got some flavor now. James, I think you're going to love this. All right. Mackenzie, lovely. I feel like we're having Thanksgiving together, Mackenzie. Oh. Do you want some gravy with that? You're right. Thank you, Mackenzie. Gravy. No, that's got a nice smell yeah, now. It's got a good. smell. Is this Thank with garlic God. salt or with garlic? Yes, it's... I chopped the garlic fresh. She chopped oh the garlic God. fresh. So it's fresh my garlic. God, Mackenzie, you're going to make someone a fantastic wife one day. It, it is, is substantially less horrible. Yeah. It is almost completely edible. Isn't that uh, quite nice, that? I would say... And then it's ruined by the lima bean. It's a lot of garlic. If I, not enough. And I'll tell save, you what... To save a lima bean? If there's one thing that a vampire doesn't love, it's garlic, right? Yeah. Why is oh, that? That's true, yeah. How, let's test your knowledge of vampires. <laughs> Why do they hate garlic? I mean, understand the cross thing and, and the holy water. Well, they're mo most of them, you know, come from old time England and they had very boring food. Mm -hmm. Right. You we know? still do. And the Italians, they were all like, oh, I'm not like an Italian. No, I don't eat garlic. Uh -huh. And so they look down on garlic. So that's basically a racist kind of thing. Right. Oh, that's a cultural thing. Yeah. I wonder I if think Bram Stoker theory. boiled food. The vampire just goes for that. I wonder if Bram Stoker did not like garlic, you know, in his real life. Was Bram, is Bram Stoker's real name Abraham and he just shortened it to Bram? Or is he known as Bram? Do you know, Bill? No idea. And was Stoker um, shortened from Stoker de Fire? Stokerson. Stokerson. <laughs> Weren't you reading Frankenstein when we were doing. I was. I love Frankenstein. The Shelley. Yeah, Shelley. Yeah, it's a yeah, great, Shelley. great book. First sci fi book. Huh? Interesting. Very first one. Brilliant. Yeah. It's an amazing book. Yeah. Mm. No one sends me a book, sent you a book. Frankenstein. Well, you don't there know. Could be, there could There's be some books in there. Yeah. We should open that Japanese gift. Well, I think that's lovely, ones. that Mackenzie. Well done. Mm -hmm. That's delicious. Should we give him some scores? You feel me. I don't mind these now, at all. We could give you some facts about lima beans, but you know what I mean? It's a bean. <laughs> what, what can we say? We can see um, in the U.S. it is a warm season crop grown mainly in Delaware and the mid-Atlantic region for processing in the Midwest and California for dry beans. Baby lima beans are planted in early June and harvested about 10 or 12 weeks later. In western New York State, baby lima bean production increased exponentially, exponentially. from two... Uh, what? Exponentially. Cunning linguist. Thank you. From 2011 to 2015. James, am Why I right that? in thinking that Delaware is the smallest American state? Rhode Island, I think. Oh. Yeah. What is, there's something about, <laughs> there's something about Delaware. I mean, obviously there's something about every state that's yeah. unique, but there's something about Delaware that's stuck in my... The president is from Delaware. Joe Biden? Yeah. Scranton? Yeah. Where, yeah. if my hand yeah. was the, the United States of America, yeah. California, yeah. New York, uh -huh. New Mexico's down here. Yeah. Where is Delaware? Well, it's the finger that we can't really put out in public. That's the middle That's finger. Yeah. Right, right at the very end. Bit. Not right at the end, but but probably right there. Right there? at that wrinkle, right around there. Okay. Yeah. Above New York. But I think so. Is that above or below? I don't know. Well, it's below, isn't it? Because isn't your index finger kind of the... the, the oh, I'm saying that. There's there. so many states over there. They're just... Uh, they're, just they're all massive. Yeah, I'm a state. Can't keep them... You know, I'm, I'm from the West Coast. We got California, Arizona, Colorado. I know where all that stuff is. Done. Right. You know, Massive. Easy. Massive. But you get in, you get in there and it's easy. It's easy. Kentucky's Enough. easy, you remember, because you just draw a chef holding a, 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 a tray, yeah, a pan, and then it's a chicken, isn't it? Yeah, it's a yeah. chicken. It's a Kentucky fried chicken. Yeah. <laughs> and isn't there something slightly confusing about Midwestern states? Isn't the Midwest, Mideast? Isn't it in the East, the Midwest? Do you know what I mean? Like it's. Well, it, it's not. Because when when we, when those states were put on, that yeah. was the West. Ah, oh, the and old then, West. Who's the two guys that went across? Um. Uh, oh, with uh, uh like the, the Americans right. just said, you two guys yeah. go and find out what happens if you go west. Stubbs yeah. and not Stubbs. Oh, right. you're thinking of Turner and Hooch? <laughs> no, that's something else. <laughs> Tom Hanks film. <laughs> yeah. No. It, Who was that again? I know what you mean though. 
So, oh, you should know this, James. I isn't really it, should. Isn't it not? I'll tell you who'd know this. Oh, my God. Johnny Mackenzie Cole. Grammer. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the two guys that the Americans sent Lewis west? and Clark. Lewis, Lewis and, and Clark. Clark! Tremendous knowledge, James Master. Sorry, Masters. Mackenzie. Thank God. Well, we should and they the, could have found anything. I just have imagine to say, being those two. Can we be honest? But, nothing against the lima bean uh, industry, which I know I don't want you to get you know hate mail on that. But it is the worst bean. Is it? Is no, it? No, come on. You like butter bean? Love a butter. Bean. Is a butter bean more or less edible? Than a butter lime bean is better than Thank this you. bean. So I is thought, a haricot bean. I thought that was a butter bean. No, 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 no. no, no. Butter bean, bean would be buttery as opposed to chalky. Yeah. That's the same shape though, isn't it? Yeah, it's it same is. shape. It's just that this is a lesser, you know, bean, really. Things Wait that minute, are... here's something about butter beans Whoa. that uh, Johnny Clues has told us. Um, Hold on. Kidney bean, awesome. Black right. bean, wonderful. Kidney bean, but you have to be careful with the Garbanzo kidney bean. Garbanzo bean, not bad. If you don't cook it correctly, it'll kill you. you. Know? Garbanzo beans, fantastic. Lima bean, why? The term Why? butter bean is widely used in North and South Carolina for a large, flat, and yellowy white variety of lima bean. Mm. In the United oh. States, sieva type beans are traditionally called butter beans, also otherwise known as the Dixie or Henderson type. In that area, lima beans and butter beans are seen as two distinct types of beans. Are you from that area? Is that why? No, I'm uh, from. Although they are the same species. In the United Kingdom and the United States, butter beans refers to either dried beans, which can be purchased to rehydrate, or the canned variety, which are ready to use. In culinary use, lima beans and butter beans are distinct. Well done, James. You're absolutely right. The former being small and green, the latter large and yellow. In areas where both are considered to be lima beans, the green variety may be called as baby, and less commonly, junior lima. I have, I know that I am, I am prejudiced you against are. lima you beans. Are, yeah. I know that I have a distorted view of them. I accept that. However, yeah. I've never been to a very, very wonderful restaurant and been served them. No, I haven't. But I was going to ah. tell you a story. But I was going to tell you a story there about butter beans. I remember being in a restaurant with my father, Austin. Hello, Austin. Hi, Austin. And he ordered for his starter a butter bean soup. And it was beautiful, like really creamy. And, and it had full, massive butter beans. They were like this big in them. And he loved it. And he gave us all the taste. And I thought they were fantastic. I agree with you, James. These are like a drier, chalkier, cheaper version of a butter bean. But I don't dislike them. Maybe they grow in soil that has problems with other beans. I don't know. I quite like them. Let's give him I'm some scores, Dallas. Very generous. We now score, and there is three categories to the scoring. One, taste. Okay. Two, aesthetics. Aesthetics. How does it look? Mm -hmm. Three, usefulness. How useful is this food? <laughs> look at James' face. He's like, what? How, yeah, if everyone, you, everyone goes, what? I mean, if you had it in your fridge, what could you do with it? Well, let's, start, I mean? let's start with flavor. Okay, let's not start with James. No, flavor. no, because we know it's going to be with James. A we, can't, a we can't go off of, 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 of the, the good one. Listen, you, I not, you just got to go with the plain lime. Right, we're going with a plain one. Listen, I agree. They're a bit drier than you'd want. And as, it's, as we've got them in this form, which is the form that you grew up with, they're not that pleasant. I would say these in a slightly spicier tomato soup or sauce, would be quite palatable. But in this dried form as they, as they are, I'm going to give them a six. I think they're all right. And in the dry form, as you've given us them, mm -hmm. uh, as you would have got them from your mother, yeah. I would have to give them a 4.5. Yeah, you can break up the number if you want into a decimal. No, yeah, we, we go decimals, but only one point. James? What's the lowest it's flavor? Well, you can there's do zero. 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 Nothing has zero. ever got zero, no, has it? nothing. Nothing. Zero. Un, that's un, a shame. Yeah. It just, just you can't even, indefensibly bad. Well, that's, a, that's our first zero, Jim. Right. Now, aesthetics. aesthetics. How does look, it look? Looks fine to me. I mean, it's a, I mean, but it's it looks like fine. a zombie version of another it's bean. It's a flat. Like a dead, pale, and pitiful version of another bean. Bean. I'm going to say it's, it's quite a beautiful, it's not almost offensive. No, I actually quite like it. I, I feel as if, see if I found that on the beach, I'd put it on a necklace and I'd Magical say to people, bean. I found this on the beach in, in Mexico. <laughs> and they'd say it's, it's a lima bean. 
I say, is it? Yeah. So I'm going, I'm going to say that's beautiful and give it an 8.7. Okay. I mean, in terms of how nature has fashioned and shaped the bean, and they're all relatively uniform, I quite like them as well. I think it's a beautiful shape. So I'm, I'm going to give it a 7.5. I'll go ahead and give it a four. Okay. Four, not no, you're, not, you're infecting not, me with generosity. Uh, yeah, because yeah. there's a certain joy to the bean. Also, I want to really be fair. Good. Yeah, well, good. good. So that my zero means something. We're getting you through this, James. This is a little bit of therapy. I'm about to cry. Yeah. Usefulness. Usefulness. No, I think we've really hit the nail on the head here. Bean soup. Delicious, as you've mentioned, as Austin had. In a curry. Mm, I don't know if I'd put it in a curry. Wouldn't you? Like a chili, maybe. A chili. In a chili. In a chili. In a pie. Bean pie. Yep. Are you mental? Yes. Um, all right. Yes, With a nice mental. puff pastry? Okay. Are you mad? All right, all right. Nice bean bit ice. of mustard. Coleman mustard. Could you mustard? do a bean ice cream? Of course you could do a bean ice cream. Wouldn't be very nice. <laughs> 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 bean, bean juice, bean juice. Oh, you stick There's it no in the ju juice in that bean. You could put juice. You, no, you, you could, could juice a thousand of those. You one drop. <laughs> Really? Put it yeah. in your but protein see that shake drop? blender. <laughs> see that drop? It could actually maybe cure so, cholesterol. Change the world. Maybe. We don't but when know. I think of usefulness, I think of what can this bean do that another bean can't? And on, on ah. that metric, I have to, again, give it a very I can't think of anything that I would prefer. I would prefer to make a soup with butter yeah. bean soup. Okay. Yeah, okay. I, okay. I would, or a chili, I would like to use a different bean. Obviously. So what so, you're saying. What's that good for? In comparison to other beans, it's probably your least favorite. Absolutely. And useless. probably the least useful bean of all beans. I think so. In its raw form, you could try to play tiddlywinks with it. You could. Do you know the tiddlywink? Yeah. yeah. You could probably flick a tiddle with a wink. Or uh, marbles. You could, you know. You could hit it with them. your thumb. Usefulness in terms of its adaptability into other dishes and, and the fact that it can be made in other dishes. I'm gonna give it a I'm gonna give it an eight. I'm gonna give it an eight point two. Just try. I just tried being to do it. Watch mm -hmm. this. James, being James, being James, that this is, is absolutely open. flavorless. It is. It is therefore you can you can use it as filler in many ways. Yeah. So I can see some usefulness to it. I'm gonna have to go with a 3.75. That's low. I think, low, but, no, but I, I think, think before we started, that would have been like a 1.2. Yeah. Yeah. So I think we've upped your your thought about this bean. Yeah. Well, it's a slow process. Healing does not come overnight. No, it doesn't come no. overnight. Well, I've got stuff on Especially my face. Especially childhood trauma. And how often do you think you got these beans? Once a week. Once a week. Oh, oh that's a shame. Hey, oh, hey, James. This is great. We're loving it. Love the chat. I'm loving it. Right? This is fantastic. <laughs> we'll continue this next week on the Friendship Onion. We'd love to hear more. You got it. So, um, but don't forget, everybody, to, uh, what is it again? Like. Well, yeah, it's rate, like, review, and subscribe. Because if you give us a nice review, and if you give us uh, a nice kind of set of stars and stuff, it allows us to do more shows. And... That's what we want to do. We want to keep making the show, don't we? Keep eating lima beans. Also, send all your emails to us at the Friendship on your castmedia.com. That's cast with a K. Or you can leave a voicemail at speakpipe.com forward slash the Friendship Onion. And we will see you with us and James next week on the Friendship Onion. Bye-bye. Thanks, James. Bye.